Hello, Mrs. H here. This is a walkthrough of the 2019 paper two. I've divided it into three manageable parts and this is part one of three. It is a difficult paper and it can seem a bit daunting, but don't forget to look at the grade boundaries because they are quite generous. Figure one shows a food chain in a pond. We have got the algae, which are at the start of the food chain. So we call them producers. Then we have Daphnia, which are primary consumers. And then we've got the Hydra, which are the secondary consumers. And the Dragonfly Nymph, which is the tertiary consumer in this food chain. And because the Dragonfly Nymph is at the end of the food chain, it's also known as the top or the apex predator. Which term describes a Daphnia in this food chain? Well, we already know they are the primary consumer. Draw a pyramid of biomass for the food chain and label each trophic level. So I'm just going to quickly scribble this food chain out here so we've got it for reference, but you obviously don't have to do that. The producer always goes on the bottom and unless told otherwise is the largest in size. Then the primary consumer, then the secondary and then the tertiary or the top or apex predator. The bar should be the same height or depth, but they should get narrower in width each level as biomass is lost from one trophic level to the next. And each trophic level bar should be in the middle of the one below. Sometimes you might be given some data, for example, in grams, and you might have to put them on graph paper and make it a very accurate scale. But this question isn't asking you to do that. So this is what your pyramid looks like. All you've got to do now is just label the levels. Give one reason why the total biomass of the Daphnia in the pond is different from the total biomass of the algae. Now, first of all, they've used the word different here because they want to see if you've understood that the biomass of the Daphnia will be less than the biomass of the algae. And then we need to think about where has all this biomass of algae gone? Because all of this biomass right at the bottom hasn't gone into the Daphnia. So there are a few answers you could put. First of all, not all of the algae that is eaten can be digested. Other answers could be some of the mass could have been lost in feces or some is used in respiration. Students investigated the size of the population of Daphnia in the pond. This is the method used. Collect one decimeters cubed of pond water from near the edge of the pond. Pour the water through a fine net. Count the number of Daphnia caught in the net and repeat the steps one to three four more times. Table one shows the results. So we've got five samples and the number of Daphnia in one decimeter cubed of water. Calculate the mean number of Daphnia in one meter cubed of pond water. One meter cubed is equal to a thousand decimeters cubed. There are probably a couple of different ways you can do this and get to the same answer. This is the way I'm going to do it. So I'm going to add up the Daphnia in all of those samples, which comes to a total of 70. So there are 70 Daphnia in one decimeter cubed of water. So then I know that one meter cubed is a thousand decimeter cubed. So if I've got 70 and one decimeter cubed of water, I'm going to times that by a thousand to give me my total in a meter cubed. And then I need to divide that by five because there are five samples and they ask for the mean. And that gives an answer of 14,000. The pond was a rectangular shape measuring with a length of 2.5 meters with a width of 1.5 meters and a depth of 0.5 meters. Calculate the estimated number of Daphnia in the pond. Use your answer from question 1.4. Okay, give your answer in standard form. Don't forget that bit. All right, so actually what we're doing is we're working out the volume of the pond. So good old maths there. Length times width times depth, and that is going to give us 1.875 meters cubed. And we know that there are 14,000 Daphnia in one meters cubed from our previous answer. So all we've got to do 
is times 14,000 by 1.875, the volume of the pond. And that gives us an answer of 26,250. And don't forget, it asks for our answer in standard form, which is 2.625 times 10 to the 4. Rainfall can cause fertilizer to be washed from farmland into a pond. The students investigated the effect of fertilizer on the population of Daphnia in water from the pond. The students put 20 Daphnia in each of the five different concentrations of fertilizer. The students counted the total number of Daphnia in each concentration of fertilizer after two weeks. Figure two shows the results. And a concentration of five milligrams per decimeter cubed of fertilizer caused a large increase in the population of Daphnia. Explain why. Well, this links back to eutrophication and the fact that actually, you know what, Daphnia, they feed on algae. And if you remember when fertilizer goes into water, the algae multiply and then they can cause problems, can't they? But the Daphnia love to eat it. So it would make sense that if there is an increase in the growth of algae, that would mean more food for the Daphnia and that's why the numbers are going to go up. Figure one is repeated below. The population of Hydra will decrease when 20 milligrams per decimeter cubed of fertilizer is added to the pond. So we're reminded here that Hydra eat Daphnia and Daphnia feed on algae. So we're going to need to look back at the graph, which shows that at 20 milligrams per decimeter cube, the Daphnia numbers have gone really low. So that just means that there's less food for the Hydra to eat. Question two, genetic material is made of DNA, which structures in the nucleus of a human cell contain DNA? Chromosomes. Figure three shows part of one strand of a DNA molecule. We have got X is sugar, Y is a nucleotide, and Z is the base. Oops, I labelled those just before I saw the box with the answers, but double check. Yeah, I think we've got those right. A complete DNA molecule is made of two strands twisted around each other. What scientific term describes this structure? That is a double helix. DNA codes for the production of proteins. A protein molecule is a long chain of amino acids. How many amino acids could be coded for by the piece of DNA shown in figure three? So if we look back at that DNA strand and remember that three bases can code for one amino acid. So if we look at each triplet, then there's a total of three triplets, which means a total of three amino acids. Scientists have now studied the whole human genome, give two benefits of understanding the human genome. Well, the list is enormous and I think the best thing to do with these kinds of questions is stick with the specification. So if we go for the understand genetic disorders, can use gene therapy to treat genetic disorders and you only have to write two but another one possibility that I might put there is a greater understanding of human evolution but there are so many more. Thanks for watching, take a little break and then watch part two and don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with new content.